I'm out doing site surveys all the time, trying to help people with heat loss, uh, air movement through their new extensions, loft conversions, through light fittings. I've showed you this one before. I've purposely installed the insulation in here incorrectly so I can use a thermal imaging camera to show you the heat loss from this. Later I'm going to show you the air movement through it all and why you need to be putting a vapor barrier, continuous vapor, incorrectly installed over the top. But let's just talk about the thermal element of this and the why, why this is incorrect. Now today with the building regulations they're starting to bring in new regulations and they're saying that we should be using a special foam tape to go around all of the insulation so that when we push it in between all these uh, joists and, and in between the uprights on all the walls, it fits nice and tight and that will stop any kind of thermal bridging which we might get through around the edges, therefore losing the energy which we're now paying an awful lot of money for. Uh, now the problem with that is that you've got to have a team that are going to be working really, really well. If you look at this bit of insulation, this hasn't been cut square. If you put a foam all the way around this, a foam tape all the way around. I'll put a link to the, the, the particular tape which is on the market at the moment and there'll be others coming on the market shortly because there's going to be loads of this done. They're expecting us to tape all the way around. First of all, cut this square, then tape all the way around so that it fits in. That's going to take an awful lot of time and it's going to take an awful lot of tape. Just in here, I reckon there's 200 pounds worth of tape that we'd have to go to use to go all the way around the whole thing. There's about 100 meters of, of tape in here. Now, I chose to do it the traditional way because we see so many people not even use any um, foam. I foamed all the gaps in here and I use nearly 50, 60 pounds worth of foam. But let me just start to show you what happens when you do do this. I mean, again, you'll see using, uh, as I show you this, that I've actually cut away a lot of the silver foil on the top of this. This is why you just can't use it as a vapor barrier. Even if you were careful, even like here, you've got it cut in quite nicely and, and it hasn't. There's always tiny little marks. You can't use it as a vapor barrier. You must put a proper vapor barrier over the top. Now, the foam doesn't, I mean, that fits quite tightly there, but you'll see, I'm going to take you outside in a second, you'll see that none of this is tight enough. The heat loss through this. The foam only just fits the front edge. It doesn't go right the way through. Again, on the other side just there, you'll see that foam is only about 20 mil deep and the insulation is 100 mil deep. So again, the, the noggin here comes across. There's a gap in the noggin. There's a gap in the noggin up there as well. So none of this works particularly well uh, and there's always going to be some heat loss but it's got to be done very, very well to stop heat loss. Let's go outside and have a look because you don't normally get to see this. So you won't normally see this from the outside because the sarking ball would have been put over it with your felts, your tiles, etc. That's normally done first to waterproof it. But obviously I'm not doing that here because this is a test rig. But if we can just look at this, look, you can just see how badly the insulation fits on this side. It's generally when it, someone's cutting this in, they'd cut it in at a slight angle so that it fits tight on that side and not on this side. And if I show you using this camera, the foam is not coming right the way through. So your, your performance is, is pitted in a certain places here but even we look here you couldn't see this from the other side uh, but there's a gap that runs right the way through inside there I can see daylight through that gap I can see daylight up here if we even look at the way that the stud works done there's 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 a, a massive gap just there which is going to give heat loss when I show you this on the thermal imaging camera keep your eye on this area you can see this is glowing red showing loads and loads of heat loss up here at this joint loads and loads of heat loss loads of heat loss in that area you'll see a shadow there that's my shadow because of the reflection of me when I'm doing it with the thermal imaging camera so take no notice of the shadow you'll see inside here a massive amount of heat loss over the top and around that area and because I kept this one back on purpose to show you why this should be extended forward uh, right out to the edge to continue that thermal element of the cold roof right the way around to the wall this one I kept backwards and you'll just see the amount of heat loss which is coming from there I'll take the camera we'll look down on top and you'll see the heat loss which is coming through and that heat loss which you'll see from the top of this which is bare at the moment just bare OSB the heat loss is coming through into the vented space and is heating this which is 50 mil above it massive amount of heat loss and of course with the cost of energy today you just don't want that 
So here we are. This is the thermal imaging of it. The sun is down, has been down for a couple of hours. It's dark outside um, and there will be no solar reflection from the sun. However, as I move backward and forward, you will see my shadow. But more to the point, if you look at what's going on here, you can see the heat loss from all of this. We can see massive heat loss coming through that section, that section on the top, but everywhere around the frame obviously is has also got a lot of heat loss to it uh, the insulation does quite well when you look at it let's run this video and we can just uh, uh, see a little bit more of what's going on but it's the main area at the top here and here which I, I, it's just amazing and of course we had that small area there as well where there was a gap uh, a big gap there where um, the foam hadn't come all the way through so we just run this forward a little bit faster and we can see here that this is my uh, the shadow of my body being reflected off of the the silver now as we move up to this top section up here if we look we can see there's there's something going on just inside where the uh, insulation is in the second slot you can see the heat has come through there that will be because not only is there a gap there but we've got a problem with air movement and that's the hot air going up and hitting the back of the cold roof and then when we move over to this this particular one you can see the insulation doesn't come right to the edge lots and lots of heat being lost through that edge because it's just not thermally correct we look inside down inside that 50 mil cavity again we can see on the you know it, it, it's self-evident people just don't get to see this it's just a amazing how much heat loss there is now let's look at the top roof and I'm now looking down on the OSB on the top and we can see the heat that is transferring through even though that we have got a 50 mil vented space that's the amount of heat that's being lost outside of the uh, the roof itself this is where we've got the uh, cutouts for the lights inside Obviously at this corner here, there's something going on. I mean, it is just quite amazing. It always amazes me how much heat loss we get when we put a thermal imaging camera over a roof. Well, we've now seen the thermal loss through this and through this. So generally speaking, what they want now and it's a really good thing to have, is more insulation put over the top of this. This stops the thermal bridging through the timber work of your stud work all the way through. And the thickness of that will depend on what you've got on your drawings. Generally these days it's 25 or 50 mil insulation. It does depend on how much insulation you've got between the joists to how much they want over the top to stop this thermal bridging. You may only have that on the ceiling and on this elevation. You may or may not have a different one on this elevation here. But you know, the most important thing is is to make sure that the vapor barrier is continuous and airtight all the way around you don't want to be relying on this silver foil I've put the silver foil on here to show you that yes you can go around and you can repair where all of this has been broken off and that's a good thing to do because the insulation here uh, that the, has a quality which this silver foil is reflecting the heat back in and by cutting it away like that some of that quality has been lost but you don't want to be re re relying on it as a, a vapor barrier there's too many problems as I, this was done two or three days ago and i'm seeing that this is still loose in 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 places all the way around it's just not airtight now when i take this off you'll see that there's uh, screw holes going through breaking it and that causes a problem with air movement as well and you'll see when I do the next video which will have the vapor barrier continuous all the way around how we get around that problem so hopefully that's been helpful for everybody out there if you've got problems with this kind of thing and you need more information please get in touch